everybody. Welcome back to the Great Wellness Getaways podcast. I'm your host, Cheryl McKinnon. I've got a guest today that's joining me from the Kootenai Rocky region in beautiful British Columbia. Patrick J. Spencer is the marketing and revenue manager with the absolutely spectacular Halcyon Hot Springs. And he's got a, a little bit of an update for us on what's happening with the resort as a result of the pandemic and also what's going to be happening in the months ahead. And I'm just absolutely delighted to welcome you to the show today, Patrick. Hi. Thanks, Cheryl. Hello. How are you? Well, I'm, I'm actually really well. Thank you. I, I live by the ocean and I have a forest in my backyard. So as far as wellness goes, I, I would say that my well-being is, is pretty much intact right now. But I'd like to know how you're doing. How have you been keeping well, both working and getting a resort up and running in the height of a pandemic? Where was the guidebook for that? There isn't one, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> there sure isn't, but boy, have you guys ever turned on a dime and come through it. But I'd like to know before we get started on the resort, it's just how have you been doing? What have you been doing to keep healthy? Well, we live in uh, sort of a temperate rainforest area and the forest, like you said, the Kootenai region. There's uh, loads of beautiful scenery. The, uh, us around here, I guess we like to do a little bit of biking and outdoor exercise. Fresh air is always huge. Uh, it's a challenge sometimes to go swimming in our area because there's a lot of glacial fed lakes, which can be a little bit chilly, but I mostly do some biking and fresh air and exercise, a little bit of reading on the downtime and uh, good food, I think is always important. Oh, I like that last one. That's really important. And of course, you're, you're in a beautiful area to access the uh, farm to table as well. So nice to hear you're keeping well. You look great. I know we haven't talked for a couple of months now. And so I'd love to hear how the resort is doing at this point. You've had a busy summer. It has been a busy summer. I think that goes beyond just our own resort, but for everyone in uh, hospitality, travel and tourism as well. Uh, it's been quite an interesting summer, uh, especially uh, in the province of British Columbia. We're one of the, the hardest hit industries, I believe, but uh, everyone has been doing their best uh, to, to get their, their operations going up, back up and going again. What were some of the things that Halcyon did specifically for your product? Because you have hot springs, mineral pools, you have a spa, you have cottages, villas, a main restaurant. It's a lot. It is a lot uh, because we are sort of four or so different businesses wrapped up into the one resort. Um, we, because we don't have a hotel facility, like you said, we have individual uh, buildings and cabins and chalets. Uh, it's a little bit easier for us to, to, to share our offerings with people because um, originally when we started, we were promoting uh, the ability to come here and self-isolate. Uh, so we were doing, in the, we'd never done room service before. It was always just the restaurant. Uh, we did put a hold on the restaurant because it's a gathering place and uh, it was a challenge. I, uh, as you know, just up and running at the beginning of the summer when everything was changing day to day. Uh, well, the best staffing. way that we could... pardon? Sorry, pardon me. It's staffing. That must have been difficult as well because nobody had any idea what we were heading into. That and I think uh, a, a challenge that still continues right now is um, is our staffing uh, and, and across the board, everyone's still looking for uh, good hard workers. Uh, because everyone's being paid to go camp right now. So it can be a challenge, but the, the workers that we have found are fantastic. And we're really glad it kind of made sure that we're not just hiring for bodies, but we're hiring quality help right now, which is very important uh, in this time. Are you seeing that, that the staff are from the local market more this year than ever before? Or are they still traveling through, passing by, falling in love with the Kootenays and staying? Um, our local market is very small, uh, so most of our newly onboarded staff, we had to reach out. We've got from all across the, the country. Nice, nice. Yeah. So what would be some of the highlights of what your guests were experiencing this summer? Um, I think one of the, the nicest thing is, is the calm and the serene. I mean, the, the namesake of Halcyon itself does mean uh, calm and serene. And that was a huge thing that we were really trying to push was not to, to have any panic inducing, but to keep the safety of our guests and our staff and our local communities in mind 
while also providing relief, wellness, and uh, luxury accommodations to, to all of our guests. Where was most of your traffic coming from? Was it people driving up from the Lower Mainland, or did you see it from all points, including the Yukon? We opened the borders with the Yukon. Yep, uh, we did have a few. Most of it is from internally in British Columbia. We do have a lot of people that do make the drive and are happy to do the, the seven hour drive from, from the lower mainland, from Vancouver and surrounding areas. Um, we also have a lot of traffic coming in from Alberta as well. Um, we're just south of Revelstoke, which is on the Highway 1. Right. Um, just quick access for people from Calgary, uh, Edmonton and, and those areas. So what's that gonna look like this fall and winter? Uh, usually fall and winter, we calm down a little bit. Um, we are open year round. Uh, we see our highest amounts of traffic in the summertime. Uh, so getting through these past few months was our largest challenge. And we think that we've helped to do that uh, the best that we can. Um, opening our doors again uh, and our accommodations to those that did want to travel. Uh, we just want to make sure that we did it as, as safely as possible for our staff and the local communities, like I had said. Mm -hmm. uh, being in a small community, if we had welcomed um, sort of a rise in any instances of uh, the pandemic, um, there was a lot of fear of what we can support in our local communities. We've got one small hospital, but no ventilators or anything like that. So uh, a huge challenge for us was to make sure that while we were welcoming travel from outside of our own area, uh, was just to make sure that we were staying safe with uh, our staff and then local communities was, was the most important for us. So interesting, isn't it, to have those, those pro protocols in place now, the masks, the social distancing, anything else that you, hand sanitizers everywhere, and what else did you do in the hotel, or pardon me, not at the hotel, the resort, <laughs> accommodation side, that puts the customer's mind at ease? Because we've got a lot of people that want to travel still this fall and winter, yeah. I don't want to touch on that, but let's talk a little bit about what you've got in place right now to give that level of comfort for both your team and the guest? Mostly uh, we did a lot of heightened cleaning protocols. Uh, the time frame to clean uh, a room or an accommodation had doubled uh, just because uh, the amount of surfaces, we wanna make sure that everything is tended to uh, very actively. We've seen that a lot in, in many resorts uh, and in many hotels. Uh, the other challenge uh, that we got from the BC Hotel Association, uh, which we acted on as soon as possible, was um, removing all as much as possible from the room that was not necessary. Um, so like our in-room guidebooks, little things to see and do. Uh, we put a lot of them online, so people still have access to the information but we did remove uh, as much out of the rooms as possible because they're higher touch zones and they're, they're, they're more challenging to clean, uh, especially when we're doubling our cleaning time and our in-depth cleans were happening every time someone would check out. Um, so it was, it was a lot of challenges for the housekeeping team. Um, it was also challenging for the guests sometimes because everyone was comfortable with having the access to those items all the time. Well, and technology has moved that so fast with, with, the pandemic. I could say that the challenge for your, your team as well was to get all this information online so when somebody's checking in they could access it. Huge amount. Yeah. It was a bit of a process. Uh, I mean luckily uh, we just kind of created a few new pages on our website uh, mm -hmm. that we could have sort of the room books online or the kitchen menus things like that just what was available. Uh, the other changes that we made like I was saying uh, was we closed the restaurant um, because it was harder to have people mm -hmm. conglomerating together there. Um, and then so we uh, had never tried doing a room service offering because we were a large resort that spread over 34 acres. Uh, but now what we have is uh, we call it the wellness concierge or our wellness butler and our wilderness butler. Um, so we we're delivering um, still our fantastic food offerings. Uh, we just had to alter how it was presented. Uh, instead of coming into the restaurant, you order from home and it's more like room service. You stay in your comfortable robe after you visited our hot springs and then we can just deliver the food right to your door. What a fabulous idea. I bet that's something you're going to keep in place. Yeah, uh, it's something that we're going to continue to entertain. If you want to come relax with us in our serene forest environment, uh, you can stay in your robe and chill out in, in bed and we'll deliver you um, some of our fresh 
food is next weekend. whenever you need it. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, that sounds fabulous. And then the wellness concierge, how did that part work? Because you've had the mineral springs, the hot pools open. Yeah. The spa, how did the spa go? The spa is a bit of a challenge. Um, again, some somewhat of staffing. Uh, and then originally, there's a lot of challenges uh, just finding out what the government of British Columbia was allowing for spa massage services. Uh, originally, in phase one, uh, everything was shut down, uh, like we know, mm -hmm. on a whole bunch of spots. Um, we've been doing this heightened cleanliness again. Uh, we do wear masks, uh, as is protocol, sort of province-wide now. Um, and so we were just doing shorter bookings, not trying to do as many people as possible, but just having those smaller reservations and being able to cater to the clientele to also provide that time frame for cleaning it was the one of the largest changes was really in-depth cleaning happening much more often. Interesting you say that because uh, less clientele and not focus so much on getting people in and the revenue aspect of it, but more acknowledging the protocols and actually affecting slow travel. What do you think of that? Wearing a hat, two hats, basically, you have as a revenue manager and the marketing manager. One is to keep people coming and the other side is, is to respect what is happening now under this new, I'm sure you've heard it, the, the slow travel and uh, slow experience that's starting to become the buzzwords in our industry. Well, it's kind of nice um, because I think we catered to it. Uh, one of the things that, that we've been always kind of pushing is to slow down. Mm -hmm. um, and one of our, our owners has, has always asked us to think about not doing everything that's possible, but uh, he likes to say, to call it living the slow life. Love it. Where we take time to enjoy what we've got as opposed to thinking about uh, what other things we have to do, uh, especially as a wellness resort. Uh, it, we don't want our guests and our clientele coming here thinking about the rest of their journey or what they have to do when they get back to work. We want them to be able to come enjoy, to, to sit in their room, enjoy the calm atmosphere, and also to be able to enjoy our hot springs in our beautiful location without thinking about what they have to do next. Uh, patience, I think, has been something that has been washed away in the past 20 to 50 years mm -hmm. uh, because of all our access to everything so rapidly. But uh, coming to our location, it's really important that we like to remind everyone that we're here to help you calm and relax. Instant gratification takes on a whole new meaning, doesn't it? Really does. Yeah. And it's hard. It's hard to unplug and, and not be constantly checking to see what's happening and the changes and what do we have to pivot to. So I really, really love hearing you talk about this and, and coining that slow life phrase. Yeah. That's, that's really special and unique. And you, you're using it, I know, in your hashtag, which is tremendous. So what does that look like for the fall and winter when guests want to get away this winter? Because you know there's going to be that demand. And yeah. especially, I think, as we get more and more towards a, a lockdown again, which, you know, that term itself is so daunting, isn't it? It, 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 it could be, but I think it's an awareness also of what is reality. Um, and it kind of comes back to what you're saying about instant gratification is not necessarily us having exactly what we think we want, but maybe being able to accept what is offered. Um, it's sort of, especially in, in these unprecedented times that we have where us in the first world don't really think that we have to deal with things like this, but it's, it's, it's a reality that we are living in right now. Um, and so being able to remind ourselves that uh, if we do have food and shelter and water, we have met most of our needs and that anything else could be a bonus. Oh, nicely said. That's so true. So it, it, it goes right back to taking time to pause. And if COVID's taught us anything, it's yeah. that patience to your comment earlier is we need to just step back and, and be calm take a little breath and, and it's okay. Which, you know, Halcyon Hot Springs, a beautiful place to do that. So you are open through the fall and winter. Yeah, we're open 365 days a year. Sometimes the most beautiful times that we have here is when the snow is gently cascading down through, through the skies and the mountains. And you're just sitting in our natural hot springs, staying nice and warm. 
um, looking out over the shores of Upper Arrow Lake and uh, the shadow of Mount Burnham, which is just across the, the lake from us. Beautiful. Yeah, we have, um, uh, we, we do calm down a little bit more, so it's nice and open. What has been really great that we've heard from guest feedback where um, currently we're, we're not open to day traffic. Uh, our, our hot springs are only available for resort guests who are staying on site uh, and where you uh, in the past had seen upwards of 100 or 120 people in the, those four pools of the hot springs during a day uh, or one time frame. Now we have a maximum people uh, set or maximum set limit of 30 people in there at a time. Uh, and the biggest uh, compliment that we're hearing is that it is more relaxing, it's much more serene, and it, it's very calming to be able to enjoy those hot springs. And sometimes guests are going in there and they have the entire area to themselves just for, for one or two of them. And those special moments are something that we're, we're appreciative of, uh, despite it's happening because of the current climate, but we have to take time to remind ourselves that uh, it's still possible to find, find those moments that we appreciate. Sure is, and I think that's wonderful. It's a, it's a dynamite getaway for, as you and I have talked offline too, that wellness is within itself a holiday to get away. You're, you're being well. You're yeah. hopefully unplugging to some degree, and you're hopefully relaxing. But it sounds like Halcyon, well, I know firsthand, but it, it, to our listeners that haven't been, it's a very inviting place to just simply step back and chill and relax and leave and come back home actually feeling rejuvenated. So I, I, that sounds very, very good and inspiring right now. So what would be the best way for people to... Uh, find out more information and to actually book a getaway right now. Yeah, right now, uh, the easiest way to get uh, information about our accommodation or our bookings is to head online to our website, which is halcyon-hotsprings.com. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we've got all our accommodations listed there. Also, any contact phone numbers, and you can even book now. It's always a nice call to action all over the website. Click that book now button and you'll be able to be directed right to our booking page. Um, we have been full up for August and September and now we're quite busy in October but we still got plenty of spaces open um, and I encourage people to check out uh, a nice calm break maybe in October, November or especially December when the snow starts to fly in our area. We will have ski and stay packages with the local Ski Hill Summit Lake in the cusp and then also Revelstoke Mountain Resort. Um, which is just uh, maybe an hour and a half north in, Re in Revelstoke. So, uh, wow, what a great idea to do. I was thinking too of Christmas and, you know, just packing up the family and taking one of the cabins or cottages. Um, Patrick, would they fly into, could you fly into Kelowna and rent a car and drive or fly into Revelstoke and rent a car and drive up? Yeah, there are um, some private transfers. The, the Revelstoke airport is a little bit smaller, so it doesn't even do any commercial flights. Mm -hmm. uh, but everything Revelstoke uh, does hook up people with different private charters, things like that. Um, if that's not something you want to entertain, yeah, I would fly into Kelowna and then get a rental car. And we're just under two hours away from there. So it's a pretty easy drive. And a beautiful uh, one. And yeah, we've, we've got driving access from the north and the south. Uh, so all over British Columbia or in Alberta, you can always access us because we're only an hour and a half off the Trans-Canada Highway. Okay, that's fantastic. I know there's going to be demand this winter. We all know it. We're talking about it. And I think it's going to be fun. We're, we're talking with Air Canada and WestJet, and they're promoting flights out of the lower mainland and different points around the province into Kelowna to access the Kootenai Rocky region and the Caribou and oh, you know, just get out and explore. So yeah, you'll, you'll see a bit more of that coming. And uh, I think our, our listeners that obviously don't want to travel in the winter time because they're worried about the highways now are realizing there's some affordable options yeah. and the flights are going to be attractive and then you get there and your your packages your pricing is is really really appealing and uh I, I'm, yeah, I'm excited to hear that you're going to be operating through the winter as well well also like you said uh, it's a great spot for a family or a group to be able to come get their own chalet or cabin because it's the only type of accommodations that we have uh, where we do uh, places that accommodate uh, just two people in our king cottages, which are nice luxury, beautiful yeah. bathroom suites and, and a really modern style 
looking like a four or five star hotel room, but in, in the cabin in the woods. Mm -hmm. And then we also have our, our loft cottages and our king chalets, which can do uh, up to, to 10 to 12 people. So if you wanted to get that family or group of families together, you can stay together in your own units and then experience our whole hot springs resort for yourself. And safely following the health protocols that are in place, which yeah. is the ticket. That's just fabulous. Well, Patrick, thank you so much. Wonderful to see you again. And thank you for bringing us up to speed on what's been happening at Halsey on Hot Springs Resort, because it is a very special spot in our province. And I, as you know, want to encourage more people to get out and experience our backyard. So we appreciate you taking the time today. It has been a special spot since uh, the late 1800s. So we're yeah, glad that we've been able to continue that. Well, your story's on your website too. We'll just close up with that, that the historical background on the resort and it's over a hundred years old is quite interesting. And I, I think our audience will certainly enjoy following up on it. So we'll share more and it'll be on our website at greatwellnessgetaways.com as well. And I thank you again and best to everybody up there. You guys all take good care and we look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks so much, Cheryl. Thank you.